In the 1950s, I had a Hornby W model railway. 60 years later, I've started it up again with a little help from eBay. Let's go and have a look at it. And here it is. All my locos have a DCC decoder, and some of them also have a Keep Alive circuit. Let's look at a loco. This is a Class 20 Bobo, and there you see the decoder circuit, and here is the Keep Alive capacitor, which keeps the loco going for 200 milliseconds when it hits a sticky patch. Locomotives are controlled by an iPad or by a DCC controller. I actually prefer to use a DCC controller with an old-fashioned knob. Here I'm going to select Bristol Castle and start her rolling. All my electrically operated accessories have a DCC decoder built into them. That's the points, the uncouplers, the colour light signals and the semaphore signals. Let's look at a point. Here's a Hornby Dublo electrically operated point. And within it I've put a DCC decoder. It's powered by the two connections the base connection and the centre rail connection. Now let's look at an actual decoder. Here is one I've disassembled. These are the input wires which were connected like that. Here is the decoder chip and the transistors to drive the solenoids and the wires going to the solenoids. Let's look at an uncoupler. Here's a Hornby Double uncoupler which is a ramp operated by a solenoid. Inside the uncoupler base, I've put the DCC decoder. Notice that the connections are again to the base and to the centre rail. There's the decoder chip, there's the output power transistor, which drives the solenoid. Now let's look under the board, where well, we'll find there's no wiring. Accessories can be controlled with an iPad or with a DCC controller. First let's look at control with the Roco multi-mouse controller. Let's look at a point in operation. Notice first that the points don't have any wires connecting to them because the power for the point comes from the track itself. I operate the point with a Roco multi-mouse and I press the button and the crossover switches to cross and going back it switches to straight. And now let's look at accessories controlled with an iPad. There's the left hand side of the station, here's the right hand side of the station. Each point is touch controlled and the crossover and routes can be set up, so this sets up the whole of the down main line through the station.
now Bristol Castle will pull away. I'm going to change the point for Mallard to couple onto the train. My motorised turntable is a Marklin model from the 1950s and as you can see it's almost 100% Hornby Dublo compatible. I've added a DCC controller which means that with just one push I can start it going. And now let's bring Bristol Castle on shed. Now I turn the turntable one step clockwise. And Bristol Castle goes on shed. I'm going to show you the circuitry inside this locomotive. It's the little Class 08 shunter. Here's the DCC decoder and this is the Keep Alive circuit which is powered by this supercap capacitor. And that's what keeps this loco going over sticky patches. I'm going to run this shunter past the camera and lift it off the track. And now I'm going to run the shunter across some points to show you how well it performs. Here's a demonstration of the Keep Alive circuit. I put a piece of masking tape on the track and now let's run a loco with the keep alive over it. And now I'm going to switch the power off so that the keep alive is no longer charged and I'm going to rerun the loco back past it. and it stalls. And now the branch line train leaves.
Here I'm going to show you how I use a Hornby Dublo switch to switch the points. And now I'm going to switch it back. Here are the switches. And on the back of each of four switches is a printed circuit board with a PIC microcontroller which generates the DCC codes. The DCC signals from the switches are injected onto the DCC bus with this circuit board. More information about this layout can be found in the Merge Society journals.